Hey everyone, I'm Amy Connell. Thanks for tuning in to Lessons to My Teenage Self, a Christ-centered, diet culture-free show about all things health for teen girls. This is the shortcut you need to thrive in your physical, mental, and spiritual health. As a personal trainer and nutrition coach, I'm passionate about empowering you to find your best version of health. Each week, we dig into one topic that I wish I'd known as a teen or that my guest wishes she had known. So my guest today is Becca Kapinski. She is a world traveler, coffee lover, and author and writer. Above all, she is a daughter of the king. She hopes that her writings, whether books or blogs, inspires others to experience a deeper relationship with Christ and learn what it means to seek him while waiting well. Becca, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I love it. I was wondering if you could just start off by telling, I mean, I've obviously shared about you with the bio that you provided, but a little bit more like who you are, what makes you tick, what you enjoy doing, Mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, so I live out here in the Midwest in Minneapolis. I'm actually a new, new plant. I just moved here a year ago. So I'm still getting used to the winters, even though it was it's been pretty mild so far. So that's been nice. But yeah, I love kayaking and all things coffee and all of my plants. And I am a writer, I have a few children's books, and I'm getting more into poetry and that side of my writing and sharing more devotional type things. But yeah, those are it's kind of the basics of of who I am and where I am. (laughs) I love it. Awesome. Congratulations on that. And you're a world traveler. So I have to ask top two most interesting places that you've been. Nepal and Costa Rica, probably. Yeah. Okay, Costa Rica is great. I love mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been there. Beautiful. We've been there a handful of times. Yes, for yes. sure. For sure. So one of the things that you had offered to come on and talk about mm-hmm. was singleness. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me or share uh, what your journey has been like with that and, mm-hmm. and kind of give us a little bit of more of like what your journey of singleness has been. Sure. So I am 29 years old. I'll be 30 in April. And I've never been in a relationship. I've certainly wanted to be, and I have tried. I've been on three first dates since I turned 20. I didn't date when I was in high school. Just, I blame it on my dad. He was a teacher at the school. So I think all the boys were afraid to look at me versus talking to me. (laughs) That's fair. You got to give them that. (laughs) Yeah. And my dad's pretty intimidating guy. So I don't really blame the boys either. So, (laughs) but yeah, I, when I turned 20, I was, I went on my first, first date and it was it was a sweet time, but it just didn't go anywhere. He was looking for a different thing. And I was about to move out of the state and try to figure out my life as well. So, and then I've been on a couple other first dates over the years and just never really, you know, made it to even a second date, but I've never been kissed. I've never been in, you know, never held hands with a boy. So dating is still like a a conundrum sometimes, especially nowadays with online dating and all that stuff. But I just like to kind of share that because I know as a single, it's nice to know, like, when you're talking or hearing from another single, like, what, like, who are you? And what are you like, what shoes are you in? Because singleness can be so many different things. You can be single, but dating constantly and still not finding somebody. You can be like, single and not going on any dates and being like, why am I invisible to, to other people? Like, you know, if you're a guy, invisible girls and girls invisible to guys. And I've certainly felt like that many times over the last few years, especially when I was in my early 20s. That was very much like, I live in a holy bubble. Like, that's what I I called it. I was like, it's like the Lord's just like keeping me from meeting people or talking to people. And I I was not happy about that for a while, but I've I've since been like, you know, the Lord protected me from a lot of probably a lot of relationships that I didn't like, wouldn't want to be in versus not even needing to be in. But it's, it's hard to be in that place, especially when you're, you're younger. And it's like, I just want to be married. I just want to have kids. I just want to have a boyfriend. And like, you know, you see all your friends getting boyfriends and getting married and it's, it can be hard to, to look at that. So I like, you know, when people to know, like I've been in your shoes and I'm currently in your shoes <laughs> and it's hard, but it gets better. It gets easier. <laughs> Yeah. I really appreciate a few things that you just shared. And one is just the vulnerability of like, yeah, I've never been on a second date. I mean, that's because unfortunately, in our society, there's this expectation of when you go on dates and you know, and all of that kind of stuff. And um, 
so I, that's one thing that I really appreciate. And the, the two, you know, I think you've got a lot of wisdom in like, this is God protecting me, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe we don't even know from what yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is, it is a protective measure. And then, you know, mm-hmm. the other thing too, that I'm, I'm wondering if you, you'll be okay if I kind of pull this thread, but you say, you know, you've watched friends mm-hmm. get married, you've had, you know, have boyfriends when they're younger or a date, whatever. And as we all know, that is something that people will often strive to do, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to result in happiness mm-hmm. or joy. And so I was oh, wondering yeah. if you might be able to speak to that some, because I know for some of the young women in my community, there's pressure almost to like find mm-hmm. a boyfriend and you'll be happy when you have a boyfriend. So I was wondering if you could speak some to that. Oh yeah. There's, there's so much pressure, <laughs> especially when you're in your twenties, doesn't matter if you're 20 or 30 or, you know, anywhere in between, but it's like, especially in like church culture, it's like, so you got a boyfriend yet? Like, I don't know how many times I'm catching up with somebody, whether it's family or friends. And the first thing out of their mouths are, so do you have a boyfriend? And although I it might cringe more nowadays when people ask me that, I like, I know they're saying it out of love, but it's, it's hard when it's like, that's the main topic. And it's so hard when like, like I said, like your friends are getting married. I have got, I've got multiple close friends that have, you know, a couple kids now. And I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> I definitely yeah. want that Lord. Like when's that happening? But it's, it's, it's weird and it's, it's crazy, but like, and I, I've seen even friends that like have gone through divorces already and like they're my age and it's like, dude, we're, I'm like, I still feel like I'm a kid. So I, first of all, I don't feel like we're old enough to be married or have children. Second of all, I don't feel like we're not old enough to be getting divorces already. Like what is going on? And it's, it's, yeah, it's like that rush of like, you just, you're trying to do what you think is the next step and what you're supposed to do with your life. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I actually don't know who I am. Like, because I didn't take that time in my twenties to discover myself and who God made me to be. And that's definitely something that God's walked me through the last decade of just like self-discovery and in a, in a good way, not in, I know it can be kind of weird ways, but God definitely was like, let me show you who I've created you to be. And you're not going to really even understand it all right now, but I've definitely seen from, from 20 to where I'm at now, almost 30. And like, man, I'm so glad to be th- turning 30. I'm like, I'm ready to be done with my twenties. It was so tumultuous. And it was very much like my emotions were up and down all the time of just trying to figure life out and be like, I'm tired of being single. I'm happy being single forever. I want a boyfriend. I never want to get married. You know, it's like all these crazy things when you're going, walking through an extended time of singleness. Mm-hmm. But yeah, God, is good. And when you're faithful and seeking him, like he'll give you that peace. And like, I know like he's, he's working through it and I'm just got to trust him. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Becca, you mentioned some, you know, that you were able to have some self discovery. And I know that Mm -hmm. and I know what you mean. And I know that's in in your like, (laughs) that's in such a good way, because God wants us to know Mm -hmm. who we are. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to see the originality that he created Mm -hmm. in us. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with just figuring out like, okay, who am who Mm -hmm. am I? And and how am I best when I am walking with Jesus? So I love Mm -hmm. that. I love that. I'm wondering, I'm putting you on the spot a bit, but I'm wondering if you can share some of the other benefits maybe that you have seen of being single of, and and just kind of this season of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, figuring out who I am has been probably one of the biggest benefits, but I I was just thinking earlier of like, what are, what are the pros of being single? And I was like, well, I can travel whenever and wherever I want to. And I don't have to, you know, be like, Oh, honey, can I, can I go with the girls this weekend? I can just be like, we're leaving. Bye. Let's go. (laughs) I'm also in the ministry that I work for. It takes youth on summer mission trips and I've been involved with them on and off for the last decade. And so like, it's been great to be able to, well, I'm going to leave for two months this summer and go on a mission trip overseas. And I don't need to worry about leaving a boyfriend behind or leaving a husband or it does, is he going to come with me or like waiting for me? Like all these things, like I don't have to worry about that. I can just I can just go and do what I want to do. Yeah, it's I feel like the freedom of being single is really nice. And I honestly, I know I will mourn that when <laughs> when I get married some days because it's like, oh, you mean I have to like ask somebody else for permission or like, can I go do this? Or is this okay if I'm gone for this long? Or are you going to come with me? Like there's so many, 
so many things, mm-hmm. but that's definitely, that's definitely one of the biggest is just the freedom of being single and, and not having to orchestrate two, two calendars. <laughs> Well, that's a good point. That's a very good point. And I think too, you know, going back to the kind of the self discovery and knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. So I am on the opposite spectrum. I actually got married when I was 22. And culture that you're talking about was very evident, not only, you know, yes, it's absolutely evident in church culture, but also culture. Mm -hmm. Um, But also in just some, you know, I was in a, you know, in Oklahoma, um, it was a bit more traditional, which is, has many wonderful aspects of it, but it was like, okay, well, you go to college, you, you know, you find a husband and you get married. So, you know, there's something to, I think the confidence and this solidification of who you are that you will have whenever God has a different season for you, that will be Mm -hmm. so foundational and you don't have to go Mm -hmm. through because everybody no matter if they are tethered to someone or not goes through a period of Mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. Okay. Who am I like, okay, well, this is what I rate was raised believing. Like, do Mm -hmm. I still believe that this, these are the constructs. Do I still believe that? And so to be able to do that Mm -hmm. on your own and to walk into a relationship, you know, potentially Mm -hmm. and being like this, this is where I stand. I think that there's going to be, there's a lot of power to that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. (laughs) <laughs> and I love, you know, and also, I think you did point out something that I think is important, you know, when you say that's church, church culture of the expectation. I'm wondering if someone's listening, and they're getting those same questions. And maybe they're even just in high school, but it's like, well, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have any mm-hmm. suggestions on how to respond to that? If that's just not in that season, or if there's not even a desire at that time? Yeah, I'm I'm still honestly working through my answer. It depends on the day because some days I'm like, oh, yeah, no, not yet. And it depends on how people ask, too. Cause some people are like, oh, why don't you have a boyfriend? And so I'm like, I don't know. Ask God. Like, <laughs> he's, he hasn't <laughs> brought anybody to me yet. But I just when people do, I've, I've learned how to to give grace in those because I know most of the time it's coming from a place of love from that other person. They, you know, they want to see the best for us. They want to see us happy. And, you know, sometimes that equates to being like happiness in a relationship, although it's not like our happiness comes from the Lord, but in human eyes, it's like, we just, they want to see the best for us. And they know like, there's so much good things that can come out of a relationship and marriage. And so they want that. So like, I try to remind myself that when people ask me and, you know, I respond in love and whether it's a joke or like, Oh, ask the Lord. Cause it's a joke, but it's not. Cause I'm, I'm also asking the Lord, <laughs> like, why isn't this happening yet? But just like, you know, there's just have to, you know, navigate the waters as it as it comes. But it's okay if it hurts and it's okay if that stings a little bit. And maybe that's just something that you need to tuck away for later and then bring it back to the Lord and be like, wow, God, like that person, you know, aunt so-and-so asked me this and it's about the hundredth time I've been asked that this month and it stings like this hurts. Like, how do we walk through this with the Lord? Yeah. That's good wisdom. And, and I like the I like the little joke with it too. Like, well, I don't know, ask God. <laughs> ask the Lord. He's this is this is his thing. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, that's a really grow in. I'm thinking of the young woman in high school who has a lot of friends who have, you know, boyfriends. And that can mean a lot of different things at that age. And who maybe feels lonely because maybe her friends mm-hmm. are with their boyfriends or maybe because they're talking about them at the lunch, or, you know, who just who just isn't, for lack of a better word, like part of that scene. Mm -hmm. Can you give them some encouragement, or, or wisdom, you're clearly full of it on how to navigate (laughs) those feelings of loneliness? It definitely requires giving that person a lot of grace. You know, it's, it's, it's so hard to sit in at the same table with somebody who's like, Oh, my boyfriend or my husband, or this is happening. You know, it's like, Oh, this is so great. And you know, when you're in a relationship, I've seen it so many times with friends and I love them, but like you can be self-absorbed in your relationship when that happens. So it's all they talk about. And you're just like, yes, I know you and Johnny are, you've been together for four months now. That's so great. And you're doing this and that's, I'm so happy for you. Like it's so hard to navigate that. And I think it's just, 
trying to find that balance of being like, I'm happy for my friend. I'm also acknowledging that this hurts a lot because they have what I don't and I, what I want. And, and so just doing that, but also like, you know, learning how to build your friend, friend group is, is key. Now, like I said, I, I, I didn't date when I was in high school, so I, I don't know what that's like to be sitting at the lunch table and have all your friends be, you know, having boyfriends and stuff. But I've been that person, you know, at 21 and 23 and, you know, 29 now. And it's like having all those friends do that. It's, you really have to surround yourself with friends that are in the same season as you. And praise God, he's brought me so many friends that have walked through this like extended season of singleness alongside of me. So it's like, okay, my core people, like we're also, we're all single. So this is great because we can all like complain to each other and love each other and encourage each other. And and it's awesome, but it takes work finding them and it takes stepping outside of your comfort zone. Like I remember when I met my best friend and like, it was just, we had to take that step and like meet each other. So I just, that's my encouragement is like, you know, if, if your close friends are, like absorbed with their boyfriends like first of all give them grace and patience like maybe that's not going to last that long and they'll be back in a couple months and maybe it does last all of high school but like they'll come around eventually and realize oh wow I've neglected my friends I'm so sorry like hopefully they come around so be patient and be there when they do come back and they come back to you but like find those other people who are walking life the same way you are like in your singleness and surround yourself with friends who who understand what you're going through. And like, that's also a perk of being single is like, I can have a ton of friends, like, because I have the capacity for a ton of friends. It's not like I'm, you know, all my energy is focused into my boyfriend. Like I have, I have so many friends and it just takes that like stepping out and being like, okay, who can I befriend today? Like, look around the lunchroom. Are there any girls sitting by themselves? Like go sit with them. If you don't want to hear your, your friend talk about her boyfriend, like go sit and find a new friend. Like, it just takes that, like, actively taking that step and being like, okay, I'm going to go make a new friend today. And who knows, maybe it's just for that day or maybe that becomes, like, your lifelong friend and you're like, wow. And it, all it took was me taking that step forward. I think a lot of times with friendship, we wait for other people to come to us and be like, don't people see how lonely I am? When when are my friends coming to me? I want new friends. And it's like, well, sometimes that happens because that person took that step, but sometimes we just need to take that first step first and be like, I'm going to introduce myself and I don't know this person. Like I've, this happened a, ha- happened a handful of times where I'm like, you know what? I, that person said something, I overheard it. And I, I feel like that is really cool. So I'm going to go up to them and be like, hi, that was really cool. What you said, like we should be friends. And usually girls are like, yeah, let's be friends. Like we're, we're very communal. We all want friends. It just takes that, that first person to make that first step. Oh, that's so good. And you're so right. I mean, the, it takes the intentionality, it takes getting out Mm -hmm. of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But I just think about well, if the tables are turned, if someone came up to me and said, I, I heard what you said about that. And that was really cool. I'd be like, Oh, my gosh, thanks. Like, we and then right away, we have a connection. You know, and so I mean, there, of course, there are, unfortunately, some girls who are so insecure, they're going to not Mm -hmm. receive that as well. But then they're they're not going to be your friends anyway, or at least they wouldn't be my friend. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, but, and you know, and I think too, like the things that you're talking about with developing friendships is Mm -hmm. applicable at any age and stage as well. Mm -hmm. I was just listening to a a podcast with Dr. Vivek Murthy, who is the U S surgeon general. And he was saying Mm -hmm. how he had realized that he had gotten so busy in his first stint as surgeon general that he lost all of his friendships because he was putting everything else Mm -hmm. and then that he had to go get this kind of core group of guys where they're very intentional and they, they do that kind of stuff. So I think that Mm -hmm. that is a wonderful habit to, to create no matter where you are. And especially we can absolutely get that emotional intimacy with our girlfriends with, without the guys, (laughs) you know, I have, I have some amazing, amazing girlfriends who know Mm -hmm. me so well. And so, yeah. So I love that you're saying that, like, just, just put yourself out there. Just be intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Um, Okay. Becca, I've got two questions. So one is I'm wondering if you would share a Bible verse with us today. And then the second (gasps) is if you could go back and tell a, you know, lesson to your teenage self, what would that be? So let's start with the Bible verse. All right. So this verse is Psalms, 
Psalm 25, four through five. And this is from the Passion Translation. Um, I love readings from this, like in addition to my other Bible reading, because it is, it's very different, especially how they word things, but it's, it's very eloquent and very beautiful. And so, and I'll explain why I love this verse, but it's direct me Yahweh throughout my journey so I can experience your plans for my life. Reveal the life plans, the life paths that are pleasing to you. Escort me into your truth. Take me by the hand and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. I have wrapped my heart into yours all day long. And why I love that verse so much is because they have a note at the bottom. And this says in verse five, the Hebrew word most commonly translated as wait, wait upon the Lord, is kava, which also means to tie together by twisting or to entwine or to wrap tightly. This is a beautiful concept of waiting upon God, not passively, but entwining our hearts with his and his purposes. And I discovered that several years ago. I don't really know how long now. And I just felt like the Lord was like, that's what I want you to do in this waiting season. Entwine your heart with mine. And so I just poured so much time and effort into seeking the Lord and figuring out like how to have a deeper relationship with him. But what does that look like entwining my heart? Like it not just being like, Oh, I love God and I'm, I'm going to read the Bible, but like, how do I go deeper? How do I entwine my heart with his? Because it's when he, when you entwine your heart with his and when you're seeking God, that's when he reveals his life, life path for you and his plans for you. And so, yeah, Psalm 25, four through five has been huge in my journey of singleness and waiting and it still is. I still go back to it all the time. I'm like, okay, entwine my heart with the Lord, like wait on God. Like he's got me. This is good. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That's so great. I love that. And I have not heard of that translation, so Mm -hmm. I'll have to definitely check that out. Okay. And then what is the one lesson that you would give to your teenage self? I would say be patient. Like, you know, it's, it's okay if you're single at 18 and it's okay if you're single at 28 and it's okay if you're single at 38, like God has the path and a plan for us. And it doesn't matter what the timeline is. Like it doesn't have to be the same as our friends' timelines. So be patient. Like as long as you're trusting God, like he's going to make the way, but also like be a learner. Like that's what I have been doing over the last decade is just like, well, I have all this free time. I'm going to use it wisely. So I've been pouring into all my books. (laughs) I've been listening to podcasts. I've been you know, watching YouTube and going to church and being a part of church groups and, and just learning as much as I can, not just about like singleness. Like that's, I've read a couple single, singleness books. I'm, I'm a little picky with what books I read on singleness. Cause sometimes it's, it's just, it's not, it is not helpful, but I'm just like, okay, what books can I read? That's going to teach me about God and like grow me in my relationship with God and teach me more. And what podcasts do the same thing, like not just fun podcasts, but like podcasts that are going to like this, like it's going to teach me how to live a better life and how to you know live holy and Christ-like and draw closer to him. So it's like, be patient and be a learner. Like those, if I could go back and tell like, you know, 16 year old Becca, like calm down, it's going to be okay. Like be patient. God's got you. And just spend this time learning. Like it's going to be okay. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Okay, that is all for today. Take today's lesson and go out there and live the life God has for you and your amazing original body. Thanks for tuning in today. Do you have a question you would like answered here on the Lessons to My Teenage Self podcast? If so, go to the show notes where you will see an anonymous form you can fill out and that question may be answered here on the show. Also, if this show is valuable to you, could you do one of two things that are enormously valuable to me? Number one, share it with a friend. Just take a screenshot, send it to her, or you can go to the show and send it straight from there. Also, if you can provide a rating and review, particularly if you listen to your uh, podcasts in Apple Podcasts. Thanks again and see you next time.